Welcome to Inside the Studio with Greg Wirth. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate some drum processing. I'm going to use this plugin that I love called Drumatom by Plugin Alliance and Accusonis. And also, I'm going to use Soundradix Auto Align. So let's check it out. Okay, so the song I'm going to use to demonstrate this episode is um, called Cold Sweat by Jeremiah Mountain. And what I have here is Drumatom. It's, I'm running it in standalone mode. And uh, what this software does is it, it suppresses leakage between uh, the microphones on the drums, which is very cool because it sounds natural and very musical. Um, previously, people were using gates or strip silence, things like that. And you, you lose a lot of the decay and ambience in, in the instrument. And uh, I personally don't like that. So I was excited when this software came out. So I'm going to show you guys my personal workflow. There's many ways to use this, but um, this is how I use it. So what you do is you launch it, and then you, you go up. When you start it, it'll, uh, it'll say import tracks. And what, what I've done is I create a folder called Drumatom, and then I create folders within it, one called Process, Sessions, and Unprocessed. So in the unprocessed folder, I created another folder called Cold Sweat. And here's the unprocessed drum tracks. And you can guess what the process folder is for. When I'm done processing Drumatom, I send it there. Just so that way I keep my file organization very organized. And um, OK, so when you pull it in, this will say Group 1 or something like that. I, I always go ahead and just name it by the song. And you fly in the tracks. And they show up here. And what you got to do is um, you got to make sure you properly assign them. So this tom low, that's low tom. And it's very intuitive. It, you know, based on the way that your tracks are named, it'll pre select it. But sometimes you need to double check just to make sure. So snare is good. Um, ride, I, I like to set it at hi hat. And, uh, or well, actually, overheads you, you can set as overheads. Forgot about that. And um, kick and hi hat. So rides and hi hat, I just set as hi hat. That's how I personally do it. So once that's all legit there, you go ahead and press analyze group, and it'll take a little, little bit to process. But once it's done, uh, you can you can go ahead and tweak the track. So basically, what it does is it analyzes the track. So there's there's two knobs essentially, and that's it. So it's a focus knob and a fine tune. So once it's done analyzing, I usually start with the kick. So what I have here is I use a Lewitt Rex 640. So there's a dynamic and a condenser element. So I'll start with the dynamic and just play it. And then I'll start um, tweaking it. You can kind of hear what it does. So as you can see, it almost removed everything. So that's really usable. Um, it preserves the decay, which is very valuable to me because you spend all this time recording a drum track, and you know a lot of times you end up ruining it with a with a gate, and then you got to put a you know a fake reverb on it to make it sound ambient again. So you know with this one, I would just run it all the way up. Um, so let's go over to snare. I don't, I don't need to waste time demonstrating every single mic. I think you'll get it. So this is snare top. So you see there's a little bit of artifacts. So what you can do is go over to this fine tune knob and you can add a little bit back into it and you can kind of tweak it to taste. So 
So the snare is a little trickier, depending on the drummer, you know, if they're hitting a lot of ghost notes and things like that, you might actually need to create another uh, group and, um, or not another group, but you can actually go to this AB and, and do a separate processing. So that's really good for cross stick or soft hits so that you can kind of um, fine tune it based on the dynamic of the track. So as you can see here, the blue is what gets taken away. So if I zoom in to the track, let me back off here. So this is the waveform of the snare. And as I dial in the focus, you can see what it starts taking away. And um, this is what it looks like if you hit fine tune. See, so it, it's just, the, the focus is a very coarse setting and fine tune is in between settings of what the focus has. So um, it's really cool. So on, on the snare, that's what that sounds like. What I, what I think is really cool is what it does on hi-hat. So let's find a, a section where there's hi-hat. So let me find a, a better loop section. So for the hi-hat, it almost removes everything else. And um, you just gotta be careful depending on the section, like I said with the snare, sometimes you might have to do a separate uh, process version. But for the most part, that's it. I'll show you how we can go ahead and process this and um, bring it into Pro Tools. So once you're done and you fine tune the settings that you like here, what you go ahead and do is press export group and then it'll ask you where you wanna save it. And I wanna to go to my folder that I created earlier and go to processed and the song and just export it. <clears throat> and then it'll send it there. And what it does is it actually renames it so that you can understand which one is which. It, it names it with process at the end. So when you fly it into Pro Tools, you can keep track of what your raw tracks and Drumatom tracks are, okay? So once that's done, what I do as well is I go ahead and I save the group And then I tell it to go into my sessions folder and I've already named one cold sweat. So I'll just overwrite that and save it. And I never really have to go back, but it's always worth doing just in case you over process something and you want to go back and tweak it and you don't have to reanalyze and re import it and waste time. So, okay. So I'm going to close this and open up pro tools and we'll hear how this sounds all together. And then I'll show you what, um, Sound Radix Auto Online sounds like on the drums. Okay, so I've went ahead and processed all the drums to my liking and I've imported them into a fresh session. And um, what I did was I created a separate playlist underneath of the unprocessed drums just so that you can hear the comparison. So to start, let's just hear these are the unprocessed drums with all leakage and everything intact. Okay, so I'm gonna play that again, and then I'm gonna change the playlist. And so listen closely and see if you can hear a difference. So it's, it's not a super drastic change, but what, hopefully what you hear is a lot more focus on the individual tracks, you know, cause like, especially the snare drum, the kick, there's a lot of leakage and those are, those are some of the main focuses of a drum set. So 
it just allows you to really tame the frequencies a lot better. So, okay, so now the next demonstration I want to demonstrate is um, Sound Radix Auto Align, which basically it's phase align software. And it, similar to Drumatom, it in intuitively analyzes the tracks together and it optimizes the phase relationship between the two. And so I'm going to go ahead and do this and um, you'll be able to hear the difference on the fly. So let me engage these. So what this is, is um, I should also mention that I have all the tracks in mono. So if, you know, if you're a type of person like me who puts your overheads in stereo rooms on a stereo track, you got to split it to mono for this, for this process. And then you can just add it back afterwards. But okay, so there's many ways to do it. I'm going to show you my workflow and you can kind of tweak it to your liking. Um, what I like to do is I like to take the left overhead as the, what we call as the send track. So this is the main, this is the track that everything is analyzing from. So you put an instance of auto align on there and uh, you go ahead and you press send one or whatever send you want. And I flip this switch down to delay and polarity. And then this input and side chain, I raise up a little bit. Um, this is just to help the noise floor and detector. And what I, what I do is I go ahead and actually save presets. So I, do, I saved a send one. And then what you do to the, all the other tracks now, overhead left, is I added an instance of it and I send it, set it to receive one. So, you know, you can save a preset. And um, basically I copied over the, the receive one um, instance on all the other tracks. And, you know, it, it's up to you if you want to analyze the room mics. Sometimes people, you know, think that it, um, it messes with the ambience and whatnot. But for this demonstration, I'm going to analyze everything just so you can hear how it sounds. Okay, so let's start with the kick. And I've, and I've just looped a section so that it can analyze. <clears throat> and, and so again, this is set to receive one delay and polarity. So you go ahead and play it back and then you hit detect. So it's gonna take a little while, so we'll just watch and, and listen. But listen closely as it analyzes um, because hopefully you'll hear a lot more low end come out. So, you know, you, you can definitely hear a difference. And um, I have two mics on the kick, so I have to go ahead and process that so that it, it sounds correct. But once you start doing all the tracks, it'll start coming together. So let's try the second mic on the kick. So there you can definitely hear it come into focus and the low end came back. Um, so that's great. So now we can move on to the next track, Snare Top. So you can see it, it nudged it um, 214 samples or whatever 
So this is really cool. I mean, a lot of a lot of times, you know, we would we would drag tracks manually and listen and use our eye to kind of align things, but this is a little more intuitive and you don't have to think about it as much. Okay, so snare bottom. Okay, so moving on, let's go to Tom High. And I'm just going to go through and process all of them, and then um, I'll see if I can bypass it and you can hear it in context when we're done. Or actually, it would make sense if I make sure that there's toms in there, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Okay. Um, let me start that over. Let's go. Okay. Now let's do low tom. So as you do this, you'll slightly hear things come into focus. It's almost like you're taking a rag and you're cleaning your lens, which is really cool. Um, I was super excited about this. And actually, I need to really give a shout out to my friend Russ Hughes from Pro Tools Expert because he turned me on to this and it's changed my life. I, uh, I dig it and I use it all the time. So thanks, Russ. Okay, so let's do um, now the hi-hat. track okay now the overhead left is our guide track so I'm going to skip that and go to the overhead right Now the rooms. Now listen for this. This is where sometimes you might not want to do this, but um, I, I like to do it just because I, you know, I feel more comfortable when things are phase aligned properly. right side of the room. Now I definitely heard something great there. It just brought in a lot of focus. And um, lastly, we got this mono room, okay?
Okay, so now that I finished processing everything, or analyzing, I should say, um, I'm going to try my best to do a bypass so they can hear it with and without auto align. So hopefully, Pro Tools plays nice. So if you don't hear that, um, I don't know what to tell you. Just kidding. Um, it just, it, it makes everything sound a little brighter and nicer. It's like, um, it's taken away a lot of the EQ work in the mix. You know, if you get proper alignment, because it, it's, it's impossible. I mean, people can take out tape measures and do all that and place their mics. But in the end, it, it's really difficult to get the best phase relationship between microphone especially when you got like 12 13 mics on a drum set so um this is an awesome tool so the the next step after this um as long as you have pro tools 11 or newer you can do um quicker than real time bounce which is great and uh what you do is you need to print this because you don't want to leave the plugins inserted on there because it's just wasting processing power at that point. So um, what you do for that is you need to go ahead and, and zero out all your levels here. And just for safety measure, zero out all the pans so that when you process it, you can fly it back into the tracks and it will preserve all the gain structure and everything of the natural recording. OK, so there's that. and. I'll just give one example. I don't want to spend a lot of time. You know, you, you can, you you can um, get the picture. So basically, you come here on your output and you select a unique bus. Let's say bus one, okay? And you can go ahead and right-click that output and select bounce bus. And just for this instance, I'm I'm just going to do the selection I have here. But you really want to select the whole audio track. And uh, so bounce bus one, it'll pull up this bounce window. And this is where, where you can um, actually batch bounce a ton of stuff. So, you know, you give everything a unique bus, like bus one, bus two, and so forth. And you can select it in here and you can actually bounce multiple tracks at once, which is great. So this is important where you want to you want to pick multiple mono wave 24 bit 96k that's what my session is natively so you want to select the same thing and down here you want to select import after bounce and you can name it so just for this instance I'll do kick sample or kick example and I usually put AA at the end just to give me um, an indication that it's been auto-aligned, similar to how Drumatom adds processed. And so you can go down here and select where you want it to bounce. Um, since we're importing after bounce, it doesn't matter. Pro Tools likes to default to this bounce files folder, which is within the session, so that's fine for now. And make sure you click this box here offline so that it'll just process it quickly. So and go ahead and bounce. And this will ask you, do you want to create a new track or send it to clip list? It's OK to do a new track. And the location, selection. So here I've, I've selected the region. So I want it to, you know, to show up in, in line, in time with this. So that's what I want. But you can select a few other things, session start, spot, whatever you want. So selection, there we go. And it dropped a new track down here. So you drag it up here. And there's my auto align track. So you basically go down the line and just do that. And um, you can playlist these or do whatever you want. And then, you know, you got your process tracks there. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, this is, you know, the way that I use it. 
you, you can go ahead and take this a little further. Since I have two mics on the kick, you can actually align the kicks together and the snares together after you do this first set of processing. Okay, so quick reminder, I'm running this really cool uh, giveaway with Plugin Alliance. We were giving away five plugins for free and I've been giving them away every Sunday. Um, and we have two more left. So all you have to do is subscribe to the newsletter on my website and the YouTube channel. And that makes you eligible for winning a free plugin. So um, yeah, and also NAM is coming up. And if you guys are gonna go to NAM, I would love to meet up with you guys. So I'm gonna be actually carrying around a handful of X clip microphone clips. So the first handful of people that come up to me and ask for one, I'll give you one for free. And also I got some really cool picks made by Dunlop. So if you want some of those, and uh, for all the people that can't make it to NAM, don't get upset because I have more X clips that I'll be giving away um, at a later time. So you'll have a chance to get one. Um, so that's about it. Thanks for watching Inside the Studio with Greg Wirth. Until next time.